What's up guys? Today we're gonna throw you a curveball in the Agent Change series. I am bringing on Taryn King, my business partner in my organization, The Wolfpack, who is one of the best niche coaches there is out there. We're gonna talk about building your value stack. She's actually gonna be on the next two videos in this Agent Change series, and I can't wait for her to share her expertise. She has built one of the best niches I have ever seen. She is a marketing genius, and I can't wait to share her with you. So in this first video, we're gonna talk about understanding a value stack and the need for it. We're gonna dive into the components of a value stack that you need to dial in and kind of maybe how to choose some of them. And then we're gonna talk about enhancing your value stack and to differentiate as we move forward. As you guys know, uh, buyer's agent to listing agent in 30 days is getting close to release. Um, so comment webinar below. If you don't know what that looks like, we are going to give you a tactical strategy in a free webinar in order to progress your business from a buyer's agent to a listing agent. If the industry doesn't change and we don't have all this stuff coming down from the commission lawsuits, that's great. You still need to list to last as the industry has said for a long time. So without further ado, let's bring Taryn on here. I am so excited to share her information with you. I will put her Calendly link in the description of this video. So let's go. All right, guys, we have Taryn King. As mentioned, Taryn, welcome to the Real Estate Agent Playbook. How are you doing today? Lovely, lovely, excited to be here, thank you. Perfect, so yeah, we're gonna, as discussed, we're gonna dive into all things value stack, uh, specialization over the next two videos on the Agent Change series. And Taryn has a unique value that she's brought. She's been able to find a specific niche, which in, you know, all reality, she was kind of born to, to be in. So tell us a little bit about kind of your journey and, and how you got to where you're at today with your niche specific branding and such. So uh, yes, horse was my first word. <laughs> you are correct. Um, although I never anticipated selling horse properties and that is after 10 years in this industry, that's all I do. Um, and I love it. It's definitely what I was made to do, but it was a journey getting here and it was a journey of trial and error um, in the residential space and the struggles and trying to figure out where do I stand? How do I do this? And why am I doing it? Um, until I finally gave myself permission to dive into my passions and who I naturally gravitate towards and the, the properties that I naturally love. Um, and at this point, we have a, we've a Horse and Hearth is a massive kind of brand in itself out here. And it's both, it's geared towards horse properties, but it's also a lot more than that. And I think that's kind of the beauty of what you can do in the niche and the niche world once you get into it. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, especially with our current climate, with a lot of things changing and so on, I know we've had a ton of conversations. Uh, the word, you know, unique value proposition kind of is, is tossed around or value add. Uh, I use value stack. So let's kind of, you know, dive into that and understanding um, the power of a specific niche value add or stack, so to speak. What's that kind of look like? And, and can you give us a little bit of a definition of where you saw that and what you kind of grabbed onto and and uh, are now advertising to the masses? <laughs> it started with wanting to show horse properties the way that horse people want to see them, which is the barn first. And so horse and hearth truly, I remember the day I told some friends, you know, I got this idea for a blog where I'm gonna just regurgitate listings essentially and show the barn first. And it's really funny to think back on that now, probably seven years ago when I came up with that idea and what it has grown into. Um, and I think that when you talk about your sphere and kind of the community building, that is what I actually ended up doing without knowing what that I was doing that. And now looking back, I can say that, um, but it's something that, you know, horses, houses and houses for horses, that was kind of where it started, right? And it became everything I do was somewhere in that sphere, whether it was happy hours at barns or going to horse expos and bringing along foster puppies and saying every, you know, good farm deserves a good farm dog. Um, we also have our, our website is at this point turned into the Yelp for the Colorado horse industry, essentially. So it's a vendor database of over 2,500 equine related business listings there. 
Um, and then our, our social media, all we do is just, we post horse properties. We give horse people what they want to see, which is pictures of the barn and our organic reach is massive. And that's where most of my business comes from. Absolutely. Started with Facebook. And now after joining the, the wolf pack, it's all YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, we're all over the place, but it's, it's all been organic and it's, it's pretty crazy. Yep, and I think allowing yourself to just immerse yourself in exactly what you already do on the day to day is absolutely massive, right? I know you enjoy doing the broker tours and all of that. So, you know, obviously from the real estate perspective, the components of your value stack, right? Because that's kind of the hot topic. That's the hot idea. And you said something to me recently about how your conversations within this commission lawsuit and whether it changes and not changes, we don't need to talk about that, but you said something really specific regarding, well, you're already offering that value to the horse property specifically, horse community specifically. So talk a little bit about that and how those conversations will lead once you are, you know, niche down and have, you know, niche specific value to add. So, I, um, when I read kind of what's going on or kind of geared into what's going on, my initial reaction was awesome. It's exciting. This is change. Um, and I wasn't concerned because I know the value that I bring to my clients and why wouldn't you want to walk into a listing appointment with a listing agreement already signed? And I've never met these people, but that's often the case. And it's because we have positioned ourselves to be so valuable to what they need. You know, these certain types of properties, they need to be presented in a certain light and they need to be presented to the right communities. Um, and that goes across the board for whatever niche you're going to get into. And so with us, we do have such a big following. We have an email list of over 2000 horse property buyers. And so then our sellers see that market and they know that there's really no other pot, there's no other potential for them. They don't, really don't want to go with another agent. We know the verbiage, the lingo, that is everything related to these properties. Um, we also have the vendors that can help these people, you know, whether it's on the buy side or the sell side, if it takes uh, getting your arena like, hype today. I have an arena guy out at one of our listings cleaning up the arena to make sure that it's presented properly. And then on the uh, backside on the buy side, we have lawyers and boarding contracts and agreements that if you want to buy a boarding property or boarding facility, we're going to support you in that entire journey, not just sell you a property, close that to cash that check and call it good. Um, and that I think has been the whole ecosystem that develops naturally when you dive into what you love and also what you can like enjoy helping people do. Right. And so we can enjoy we can enjoy what we're doing and really provide value to both the buyers and the sellers that a lot of other agents can't. It's just not their world. And it's the world I live in. It's the world I grew up in. I have five horses on my ranch 10 minutes from here. I had a horse rescue um, that I started in Colorado. And so that was very much who I am as a person. And that transferred over to business once I allowed it to and start and stop trying to struggle struggle in the residential space. Yeah, and I think that's a really key point in this all is that you said you have attorneys, you said you have people that are arena specific. So you're you're not doing all of this work. It's not like you are everything horse. You just created the community and built a team in order to call people in. And, you know, I know when we first started, you know, talking and such, you were pulling weeds and stuff. So I'm <laughs> so happy to hear that someone else is Doing cleaning the arena. <laughs> right. But uh, the value stack is there. Right. And even if it's just building a community and getting people that will be needed at step A through Z on board as, you know, potential referrals and such gives you the power of really building that entire sphere out. And I'm sure that people you know, besides yourself have helped grow that over 2000 person database, right. not to mention buyer's agents see is a little bit sketchy, um, at this point, but the ability for you to plug people in to a resource where they're going to see horse properties, where they're going to maybe have some of that buyer agency, you know, legwork out of the way because horse people are going to buy horse properties if they can afford it. They're also not going to be first time home buyers. So they might have, have a little bit of, of leg up there, but the ability to pull people into that community, not only leverage it as an opportunity for people to be connected to any part of the industry that's needed, 
but also going into a listing appointment saying, okay, here's the deal, right? The future of the MLS is up in the air right now, right? And so if you provide a database and data to these people and you say, okay, here's the deal. Like we're gonna list this, we're gonna make it pretty, we're gonna take pictures, we're gonna put it on the website. That website very well may become, you know, the the Colorado at least specific MLS for horse properties, you know, MLS is probably not the right term to use is, is that's, that's what we can't use, but really cool how you've kind of built that up knowing. And so those conversations on the buy side and the sell side look a lot easier because you've niched down. So let's move a little bit away from the horse stuff and talk a little bit about, you know, how someone can find that piece. Um, obviously the horse properties, especially in Colorado are of high value, but there isn't a ton, right? You're not going to sell 200 horse properties in Colorado. And so, um, talk a little bit about what people can do to kind of find that specific niche. And if there's any like guidelines you have to kind of draw into one, because the last thing we need to do is spend a lot of time building a niche that's, you know, dying or not lucrative. So talk a little bit about that and, and some, some ideas you would have for maybe a, a different niche or how, how you would build it if it was, you know, a golfer or a, you know, skier I, or whatever I wish, I wish i had more time because i have so many ideas for so many mm. different niches that could work um and i think the biggest thing is be true to who you are because you have to love what you do and so whether it's and we have talked to people about if you're a dog lover you can absolutely build a niche around dog properties whether they're within walking distance to a dog park maybe they have nowadays we have a lot of um like dog washes in your house in your kitchen i have one in my kitchen because farm dogs um golf my husband's a big golfer whether you are fishers you know if you're a mountain person or if you really enjoy fishing can you find properties that are within distance or have some kind of stream or waterway on them and those are kind of the more unique ones but then there's all the traditional okay are you going to go into luxury are you going to work with investors are you going to work with first-time home buyers like that is every single one of those is also a niche and it's absolutely something that you can build an entire ecosystem around um i like the fun ones i think the kind of more unique you can be and how true you can be and authentic to yourself whether that's homesteading and regenerative regenerative properties or homeschooling, you know, even talk to somebody about building out here's properties and houses that have a place that you could really develop a homeschool and have space to homeschool your five kids, you know, because that's not every property. Um, there's whatever you are into, you can build a niche around that. But I think that is the key aspect is you have to be into it. You know, there's a lot of people who want to get into luxury or I see a lot of people who want to get into the farm and ranch space too, but they don't live the lifestyle. They don't talk the talk they don't walk the walk and that comes across very quickly and then you're just wasting your time at that point right and then it comes in especially when some of more of those general uh ones that you mentioned first time home buyers and so on i think even more it's about building that team out right mm -hmm. building the team out for what's going to come up maybe it's not boarding attorneys maybe it's you know somebody to help you learn how to maintain your house or yeah. you know that kind of stuff especially first-time home buyers there might be some work done so contractors and designers and mm -hmm. and those kind of people and obviously if there's a recreational interest as far as that goes it's a lot more fun but you know not everyone has has a the, uh, not, right, not everyone's that that way so <laughs> that's really cool so let's talk a little bit about differentiation right there's a lot of people that want to be in the horse industry there's a lot of people that have tried horse property websites and and so on so talk a little bit about the importance of differentiating when you get into said niche and, and maybe a few things that you've pulled on that have you know maybe been a crazy idea but have really you know elevated your, I've got your a few. <laughs> uh, niche. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things is really 
the entrepreneurial mindset. And that's kind of also how I've always been as well. I see this as a problem and how do I create a solution? And so that can be across the board. And for even, you know, the way I started the blog was I saw a problem where these properties were not presented the way that the consumer wanted to see them. And so in creating that solution, this whole brand started to develop and things like with Horse and Hearth specifically, um, you know, we have a massive kind of tension out here in Colorado between the what his rural Colorado, very kind of heritage of Colorado, cowboy town, if you will, and what is massive development and happening really quickly in real time. And so there's a lot of tension between that. And that's something that I didn't really intend on going down that path, but now I am creating and connecting with uh, equine professionals across the country who are experiencing the same thing because there's this tension, there's this problem. So how do we create a solution? And so I think that is where you start to differentiate yourself is whatever properties, whatever niche you're into, what do those people need? What are they struggling with? And how do I create a solution for that problem? And then dive into that. And that's going to set you apart. Um, I think branding is a really big part of it. You have to brand yourself and even down to the colors that I actually, I'm like wearing the colors of my brand right now. <laughs> it's like literally something that you embody. Um, and so it was also a green and gold. It's kind of a very equine focused brand or colors. And so you're gonna set yourself apart by those little things that you're going to do, but then those bigger projects are what will put you apart in the marketplace. Um, and something like when we, we are such a word of mouth referral business right now, which I didn't realize um, until this year, but but it's because when somebody calls, they know that they're going to, like I have a lot of uh, relocation clients right now, rec relocation buyers, and they know that when they call us, they're going to have somebody guide them through the process of purchasing a horse property out here, but they're also going to have somebody and get them involved in the community out here. And so again, it comes back to that community building. And I think that any good realtor is a community builder. And I think that when you can differentiate yourself within that and set yourself apart in your community, it's that is the kind of the secret sauce there for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like niching down and they're, you know, spend so much time on their logos and all the things. Uh, when you get into a niche and you're in the right place, obviously, like, you know, one of the first things you said to me when we first met was your passion to make sure that horse properties don't disappear, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's kind of two headed at this point, right? With the development and the money that's being thrown out, especially as, as, uh, the Denver Metro area expands here, but it's happening everywhere. Uh, when you can sell a property for, you know, X million of dollars, because you have the space and you could have 10 horses out there, or you could put a hundred houses on it. You know, that's, that's where the money comes in and you have these big corporations that are buying these developers. And so there is a good fight, right? <laughs> even, oh, yeah. even when you're in it. Uh, and so I think that that's, that's the thing is not just sitting back. Like I've talked to a lot of people who are horse industry horse, you know, kind of realtors, so to speak whether they have a horse on their business card with right here, you know, the cool headshot, or they actually are in it. I think that that's super important to, to look at is, okay, how do we maintain this and how do, you know, that's a huge give back to the horse industry. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely needed. So the differentiation is huge. Our, we have so many on that same kind of tip is our, so many of our listings right now are older, um, owners who kind of poured their heart and soul into these properties and they will come to us knowing that we have a vested interest in protecting that property and not just going to convince them to sell to anyone. Um, I'm thinking of a listing that we have down south currently. We've actually had a couple offers on it. We have had a full price offer on it and the person wanted to turn this beautiful 40 acre property into like a construction site and a roofing storage site essentially and the older client that we have she just was going to be heartbroken and not only that but i was going to be heartbroken personally as well and so it wasn't about the money for her and it wasn't about the money for myself it was about this legacy she had built and how do we protect that and there are plenty of agents out there that could have wordsmithed or can convinced and, and, you know, to hold her that this is the best thing you've got, you know, it's a slow market, we've got to go with this. And I said, No, I get it. We're not going to sell to this person. Absolutely not. 
and she trusts me inherently at this point mm-hmm. because of that she knows that we are, our heart is in the same place hers is right and that's that's key and you know you have to have to walk a fine line there especially but it all starts with your core values right and if you have core values like any business starts with core values right we we're just talking about you know a podcaster and he t- he's an entrepreneur and he talks a lot about uh core values and that's how you start the business and you live by the business and you look at them every decision you make you know kind of goes through that and that's when those niches and those brands will really take off is when you can absolutely you know make those decisions and make those calls because you know there there will be somebody that's a right fit for that property there yeah absolutely awesome so okay cool well let's kind of wrap this one up we'll get to the power specialization and all of those things next but just wanted to uh where can people find you first and foremost and if they're interested in booking a call with you we'll have the links and all the horse and hearth links below but also you know what kind are you offering and and what can we where can we go from here yeah, so I love having conversations about building out niches with, with whoever, wherever crazy ideas you have, I'm all about it. I'm happy to always have a conversation and we're Horse and Hearth on Facebook, Horses and Houses CO on most other platforms. And I definitely have a Calendly link. We'll put that in there. Reach out. You know, it's always worth a conversation and I really do enjoy um, helping other people dive into whatever they are into. Absolutely. Right. And if that means just a conversation and you're, you know, kind of worried about where the industry is going or interested in having somebody like Taryn in your corner and partnering with her. She does a great job with her agents, uh, really trying to dial that in. I'm super excited to watch, you know, other niches grow. As as she mentioned, she doesn't have a lot of time to build out all of her creative niche ideas uh, because she's so uh, entrenched in the horse world. But Taryn, thanks so much for coming on and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, bet. Wow. What an amazing interview. First of two videos we just completed with the great Taryn King. Uh, Check her out on her socials, definitely give her a follow. And if you're interested in chatting with her, either about your specific niche or moving your business over um, to partner with her, please book a call with her. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. More to come from the Agent Change Series. Thank you so much for watching.